This is lesson 5 of 20 lessons on how to build a Joomla website. This lesson is the first of six manual installation videos. You don't need to watch them all as I'll explain as we go along. If you happen to land on this lesson first, I recommend that you go back to the start if you're interested in an overview of Joomla. Also, if your web host provides a one-click install option, you should watch the previous lesson instead. Or if you already have a Joomla site installed, please jump to Lesson 11. For everyone else, let's begin. For the benefit of those who have started the course at this point, I'm going to repeat some information from the previous lesson. I need to explain the various versions of Joomla. This series was produced using Joomla version 2.5, and if you're starting from scratch, you don't want to build with an earlier version. However, if you already have a Joomla site, and it's running on an earlier version, stop now and look for our other appropriate course. Also, if a newer version of Joomla is available, don't necessarily jump to it straight away. Almost all Joomla sites use some extensions. When a new version of Joomla is released, it takes a while, sometimes a long while, for extension developers to update their applications. As a result, working with the latest version of Joomla can be difficult, if not impossible. So, which version do you choose? I recommend waiting at least six months, and quite possibly longer. The previous version will continue to receive security updates and bug fixes, so it's safe to continue using that version. For example, Joomla 3 will be released in September 2012. But Joomla 2.5 will be continued to be supported until the end of 2013. But the decision mostly rests on your website needs. You need to decide what your website needs to do, check if that functionality is available with Joomla, and if you need to use an extension, check that the extension is compatible with your desired version of Joomla. If in doubt, start with an older version of Joomla, as you can always upgrade later. You can't start with a higher version and downgrade if you make a mistake. The next step is to choose a web host. I mentioned the hosting requirements in Lesson 3, but those are the minimum requirements. Some hosts are much more Joomla friendly than others, and we have a recommended list on our website. The host I'm using in this demonstration is better than most because they are Joomla experts, the support is good, and the value is excellent. There is a link beneath this video that takes you to our list of recommended hosts. The steps to install Joomla manually are 1. Download the compressed Joomla file. 2. Extract the contents of this file on your local computer. 3. Upload the Joomla files to your hosting account. 4. Create a database at your hosting account and 5. Run through the Joomla web installer. There are various ways to complete this process, but the first three steps are always required, and that's what's demonstrated in this lesson. Before beginning, you might like to start a document containing all the passwords you'll be using throughout this process. The first information you should note is the upload instructions from your web host. Hosts usually provide this information in some sort of a welcome email. The details you need are 1. The FTP server name where you upload your files 2. Your FTP username 3. Your FTP password and 4. The location to store your files You might like to keep a record of these details in one spot so you can easily access them later. The FTP server name is often ftp.yourdomainname.com, but check with your host. You'll also have an FTP username and FTP password. The last one isn't so obvious. Your host's welcome email might include a location on your hosting account where you store your web files. For example, I use a control panel called cPanel, and the files are stored in a folder called public underscore HTML. Plesk, another popular control panel, stores files inside HTTP underscore docs. So, if your host has told you to upload your files to a particular location, make a note of that too. 
All the Joomla files you need are available in a single compressed file. Get this by opening your browser and going to www.joomla.org. Look for the button that directs you to the download page. This series of tutorials demonstrates how to use Joomla version 2.5. In most cases, you'll save the zip file here. But if you need a different version, such as tar format, you'll find this here. Note that Joomla is being updated all the time and the minor version number, in this case 2.5.6, is likely to have changed. That's OK, newer versions don't affect this training. Now download this file in the same way as you would any other file. In my case I right click and choose the save option. Then select a folder on your local computer to save the file. You might like to create a dedicated folder for all your Joomla activities. Now wait for the download to complete which could take a while as it's a large file. That's the first step done. Next you have to extract the files. If you have a zip program already installed, as I explained in Lesson 3, all you need to do is open the file you just downloaded. I'm using Windows so I open the folder where I saved the download and double click the file name. This opens a new window with the option to extract all files. If you installed WinZip you'll see that program interface instead and you'll see an equivalent option somewhere to extract the files. Click the button to extract the files and choose a location where the file should go. In my case I'll choose the default location it's provided. Click Extract and wait for this process to complete which will take a while. I'll pause the video at this point until my computer's finished. Go to the folder where the files have been extracted and have a look at the result. There are several folders and files that have been extracted. But don't go looking for something to run. All you're doing is preparing the files to be uploaded to your hosting account. You're not trying to get Joomla running on your local computer. Now we have to transfer all the Joomla files to the website hosting account. You need to make a decision where these files should live. If you have a brand new hosting account, then you'll place the files in your main hosting directory. If, however, you already have files on your hosting account, you probably don't want to disturb them just yet, so it makes sense to create a new folder and upload the files there. You can then build your site and move it to the main folder later. Once you know where to put your files, it's time to upload them using your FTP program. I'll show you how to do this using FileZilla, that I recommended in Lesson 3, but the process is similar for all FTP software. Run your FTP client and have a look at the interface. The files on your local computer are listed on the left. The files at your web host will be listed on the right once a connection is established. So in the left column, navigate to the folder where you previously extracted the Joomla files. In my case that was Drive D, Joomla and you can see the files in the window in here. Now let's connect to your web hosting account. At this point you need the hosting details provided by your web host. The first is the host name which is often FTP followed by your domain name but check what your host provided. In my case it's FTP dot joomla video demo dot com then your FTP username mine is joomla v5 and your FTP password unless your host has told you otherwise you can leave the port one empty then click the connect button and you'll see your website files listed at the right 
and this is where you need to know where to store your hosting files. In my case, the files need to be stored in the public underscore HTML folder. So I'll double click on public underscore HTML to move to that folder. As I explained earlier, your web host might provide a different folder name such as HTTP underscore docs, or perhaps the first folder you land in is the correct one. Once again, if you're not sure, check with your host. Now, as this is a new site, I'm just going to upload everything to this location. However, if I wanted to create my Joomla site somewhere else, I could create a new folder here. Right click, choose Create Directory, give it a name like Joomla, and click OK. Then you would double click on this new folder, so it was ready to accept the Joomla files. Now we're ready to transfer. We want to copy all of the local Joomla files to the website. Simply select everything here in the left. And then right click and choose Upload. This will upload all the files to the folder you selected at the right. This will take a while as there are many files to be uploaded, so I'll pause the video. All the required files are now on your website and this completes the first part of the installation. The second step is to create a database on your hosting account which I'll show you in the next lesson. Your exercises for this lesson are 1. If you haven't already, check out our list of recommended Joomla hosts at www.buildajoomlawebsite.com Look for the link to Resources Web Hosts. We sometimes run specials with hosts where we include additional Joomla training for free, so make sure you check that out. 2. While you're at our site, download the free companion workbook to this series, which you'll find on the home page. 3. Set up your hosting account, download the Joomla file, extract the contents, and upload the files to the correct location at your host.